Christ is risen, alleluia. Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral of the Holy Cross, those of you who are gathered here in the cathedral itself and those watching on Catholic television. What a joy to be able to celebrate this Eucharist with you today. I think it was 1949 or 1950, my grandfather, Lou Reedy, gave us for Christmas a television set. It was the first television set in our neighborhood, and it was about the size of a refrigerator with a little screen this big in black and white, and on one channel there were television programs. One of those television programs was one called You Bet Your Life. It was a quiz show of Groucho Marx, who would be puffing his cigar and asking these nervous contestants very simple questions. Even as a child, I was amazed at how many people were unable to answer even the easiest questions. But if the contestants performed very poorly, at the end of the show, Groucho would throw them a softball question. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? Can you believe it? A lot of people couldn't answer that question. A few months ago, across the street, across Harrison Avenue, the National Geographic Society brought in the touring exhibit to the Sowa power station beyond King Tut. It was a magnificent exhibition about the Egyptian pyramids in Memphis in ancient Egypt, the three largest pyramids for 4,000 years were the largest structures in the world. They used enough bricks to build those three pyramids that you could build a 12-foot wall all around France. These were extraordinary buildings. In 1922, Howard Carter and Lord Kavarnan discovered King Tut's tomb filled with treasure. And, of course, they met tragic ends, which began a legend that there was a curse for anyone who disturbed those tombs. Now, most people have heard about the pyramids, but not many people remember who was buried there at such great expense. Today's gospel talks to us about another grave. It was a borrowed grave, hollowed out of a cave. It was a grave where someone who was born in a stable and who said, the foxes have their dens and the birds of the air have their nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. This grave contained no gold treasure, no curse, and yet Pilate set a security guard to protect it from grave robbers. The gospel today describes the intrepid Mary Magdalene, who on Good Friday stood with the Blessed Mother at the foot of the cross. And on Easter Sunday, Mary Magdalene sets out for the grave early in the morning because the Jewish Sabbath is now ending at dawn and it was permitted to walk about. The tomb had been sealed with a huge stone and guards had been stationed there. Mary Magdalene was worried about how to move that stone. I'm sure that plan A was to badger the security guards into doing it for her. But when Mary Magdalene arrives in the darkness, that darkness betokens her grief and sense of loss and disaster. She's shocked to find that the tomb is empty, the stone rolled back, and the guards gone. No stone, no hidden treasure, no curse, only an empty tomb. The meaning of that empty tomb is lost on Mary Magdalene. She runs back to the cenacle where the brave apostles 
are hiding out in the witness protection program. Sometimes on the radio we hear that nice undertaker from South Boston advertising the affordable burial service options and urging us to plan ahead. In Jesus' case, no one planned ahead. Joseph of Arimathea was a closet Christian, a secret disciple of Jesus. He didn't want people to know that he was Jesus' followers, like many people today. He was successful and respected and didn't want to jeopardize his standing in the community by being associated with controversy. So it's shocking when Joseph of Arimathea comes forward after this public execution to claim the body and to bury that body in his own grave. Suddenly, that borrowed grave becomes the center of the universe. More important than any pyramid or funeral monument, the empty tomb suddenly announces that human history has changed. Things will never be the same. Death no longer has sway over us. Our Redeemer lives. Peter and John ran to the empty tomb. Theirs was a journey of faith. Little by little, the truth is being revealed. The tomb is empty. If the story had ended there, we could say the grave robbers got there first and overcame or bribed the guards and took the body. But the Easter story continues with the apparitions of the risen Lord. Before his death, Jesus quoted the psalm saying, they will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And that's exactly what happens on Good Friday. But the good shepherd comes back to gather the scattered. He appears to Mary Magdalene in her grief and he calls her by name and he gathers her to himself. He appears to Thomas who's scattered in his doubts and says, Thomas, come and put your finger in the place of the nails. Be not unbelieving but believing. He appears to Peter who denied Jesus three times and three times asks him, Peter, do you love me? The good shepherd appears to the disciples on the road to Emmaus who are fleeing from Jerusalem in fear. But you know there is a beautiful tradition that the first apparition was not recorded in the Gospels. Jesus would have appeared first of all to his mother Mary the sixth mystery of the Franciscan Rosary is precisely that, the risen Lord appearing to Mary after the resurrection. No, it wasn't just the empty tomb that convinced the apostles of Jesus' resurrection. For 40 days, the risen Lord appears over and over again in different settings, teaching us the new way that he is going to be present, not just for 33 years in one place, in one country, but everywhere and for all times. Many of the Easter apparitions relate Jesus' new mode of presence to the sacrament and the mission of the church. The risen Lord breathes on his apostles and says, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them. The risen Christ communicates the power to forgive our sins. On the road to Emmaus, the risen Lord appears to two disciples who recognize him in the breaking of the bread. But Christ disappears. The bread remains. It is Christ showing us that although we cannot see him, we know that he is present in the breaking of the bread in the Eucharist. On his last appearance on Ascension Day, the risen Lord commissions his church to preach the gospel to every nation and to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He assures us of his continued presence and lo, I shall be with you until the end of time. 
And Jesus promises the Holy Spirit on his followers. And on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes and ignited the fuse. Today, 2,000 years later, we celebrate the Eucharist and receive into our hearts the risen Lord in his glorified body. He lives and his life nourishes us as individuals and as a community. Each time we receive Holy Communion, the risen Lord is coming to us. Each time we go to confession, the risen Lord says, go in peace, your sins are forgiven. Each time we baptize the little child, Jesus is saying, let the little children come to me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Of course, the resurrection is not a bare fact, a piece of data, something you can take or leave. The resurrection is the event without parallel. It is calling us to conversion. The resurrection is the event of events, the defining center of history. To know Jesus, to know his love, is to experience a call to lead a better life, to treat each other with greater respect and concern. To know Jesus' resurrection is to begin to understand that we are going to live forever. That puts everything else in perspective. In the light of the resurrection, our lives must change. We must move beyond the materialism and individualism of our culture and embrace our mission to witness to the good news and make God's kingdom more visible by the way that we love, forgive, and care for one another, especially those who are weakest and less fortunate. The resurrection assures us that there is life beyond the cross. There is meaning to suffering and that love is stronger than death. If Easter is being about being surprised by joy, it's also about sharing the good news and the joy that our Redeemer lives. Mary Magdalene ran to tell all the people, let's stop dragging our feet. We must share the good news. He is risen. Happy Easter.